Hey, what is going on everybody out there? My name is Jake James Lugo. Welcome to the channel and welcome to this brand new JJ's One Man Podcast. Special episode of the podcast today because it is Star Wars Podcast Day. A uh, big shout out to Daniel as well as also my friend Jedi Lex for sharing out information about this so that way I could find it. And because you guys know I love Star Wars and I love video games, I was like, you know what? I have to be a part of this. I have to join in on the fun with all the other great podcasters out there. So make sure you check out that hashtag on social media and all the different platforms that Check out a bunch of great different podcasts out there talking about Star Wars, talking about Star Wars related topics. But for me personally, because you guys know how I am, I have to talk about Star Wars video games because gaming is my bread and butter. And I was like, you know what? What better way can I contribute to Star Wars podcast day than to talk about Star Wars video games? That's what I know. That's what I'm an expert on. That's what I'm a part of, of my entire life. It's something that I feel like I could really give to all the Star Wars fans out there. When you want to know about Star Wars games, everybody in the Star Wars community, you got yours truly to come to to find out what's up. So make sure before anything else, we get into a lot of fun stuff because there's a lot to talk about today when it comes to Star Wars video games. A lot of great topics we're going to dive into, but housekeeping, make sure you guys hit that follow button in whatever social media platform you're on. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button here on YouTube. And don't forget also, if you guys can, leave a like down below on the video podcast episode. Leave some comments about all the topics and all the things we're going to discuss today because this one's going to be fun for me. I'm actually looking forward to this. Uh, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be goofy. It's going to be a lot of fun just overall because Star Wars Podcast Day, talking about Star Wars games, is going to be a blast. So first big thing I want to get into that I think is going to be a lot of fun outside of all the other stuff we're going to discuss, I want to talk about Star Wars games that are must plays. I want to talk about Star Wars games that are some of the best out there or some of the most recommended that I could put out there to you guys that I feel like every fan of Star Wars, whether you're a big gamer or not a big gamer or just a casual Star Wars fan, these are the games that you need to check out. Now, let's be real Star Wars fans because I know there's a bunch of you out there. This isn't the top 10 or top 5 of all time. Obviously, there's a whole bunch of other games I could probably put into this conversation. And I've actually talked about some of this stuff in various different places like TikTok, like YouTube, like Twitter. Which, by the way, if you're not following me on any of those platforms, you need to do so. There's links down below in the description box. I'm just saying, Star Wars fans, check it out when you can. But these are five games that, for Star Wars Podcast Day, I could recommend to everybody because these are great games in various different ways. Whether it's great gameplay, great story stuff awesome Star Wars related adaptations or anything else that I feel like all Star Wars fans need to check out when you can. And as someone who has played these games multiple times, has talked about them multiple times, has talked about them in relation to other Star Wars games in multiple different instances, I think I'm more than certified to actually talk about this. Again, Star Wars fans, if you want to talk about Star Wars video games or you want to know about Star Wars games or anything gaming related as regards to Star Wars fandom or the community, your man right here has got you covered. So first one we have to talk about is this bad boy right here. Boom! Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, the game. This is a phenomenal game that if you haven't played already or if you didn't grow up during the time frame when Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith was coming out, you need to check this out. Now, specifically, the PlayStation 2 version or the Xbox version, whichever one have you, this game is something that everybody needs to check out when they can. Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith is one of the better Star Wars video games that adapts one of the actual movies. There's been a couple here and there. <laughs> We've had games like The Phantom Menace, which have came out recently on the PlayStation Plus collection for premium subscribers, where you actually get to play through the events of The Phantom Menace. Uh, we've also had other games here and there that have adapted stuff, including Attack of the Clones as well. But Revenge of the Sith, specifically Revenge of the Sith, is the one that I feel like on consoles is the most fun to play. For various different reasons. You see, the thing about Revenge of the Sith is that not only do you get to play as both Anakin and Obi-Wan, but you also get to do a variety of different things. Outside of fighting droids and all the Confederate Army, you get to experience Order 66. You get to actually have the big duel on Mustafar between Anakin and Obi-Wan. And on top of that, you also get to have both perspectives of that fight, including an alternate ending, which is infamous for many Star Wars fans out there. You know that ending. You know what I'm talking about. Exactly. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go play the game. Go look it up so that way I don't spoil it here for you. Everybody knows this, but if you don't know it, go find out. I've even talked about this in my review of Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. I have a review video here on the channel right now. Go watch it after this podcast episode, of course. 
The point is, though, is that as far as adapting a Star Wars movie or some sort of Star Wars media into video game form, this is, in my opinion, one of the best. Granted, it's not the best for the franchise as far as Star Wars as a whole, but when it comes to a movie, Revenge of the Sith, this is what was the best option that we had back in the day. And keep in mind, too, I should mention as well, because this game is infamous for this. This came out before the movie. Most Star Wars games that were based on any of the prequels ended up coming out before the release of the movie. So we kind of got like a little, <coughs> I guess you could say, inside knowledge or inside or insight, I should say, into Revenge of the Sith right before it came out in theaters. So we were all hyped up. This was part of like that hype wave of completing the saga, you know, the final Star Wars movie, quote unquote, which we all came to know eventually wasn't the case. But check it out if you haven't already done so. It's definitely one of those phenomenal games that you need to actually play if you haven't already done so. Number two that we're going to talk about. And again, <coughs> I should mention that none of these games are in descending or any specific order. These are just five games that are must-plays in my opinion for any Star Wars fan. Long time or just new, okay? This one is a banger and we have to talk about this, okay? We absolutely have to talk about Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Like... There's just no debate. This is hands down the best Star Wars game ever released in multiple different ways. And I know there's a debate for a couple different games that fit that title. But real talk, I mean, Knights of the Old Republic, I have multiple copies of this game. I have it on the original Xbox. I have it also on Nintendo Switch. And I have it digital on uh, Steam, okay? Multiple copies of this game. Why is this game right here, Knights of the Old Republic, such a big deal? A lot of people that are probably just getting into Star Wars games have never really heard about this or probably heard about it but never played it and don't understand, like, what's the big deal? Like, why is everybody losing their mind over KOTOR? Okay, what is KOTOR and all that stuff? The bottom line is this. When you take a franchise like Star Wars and you want to actually make some sort of experience in gaming form that allows you to be immersed by it, that allows you to really kind of like walk around and really take in a lot of the stuff that makes Star Wars what it is, this is the best rendition we have to date. We obviously have other games like Battlefront. We have virtual reality games. We have other arcade style games that really play on a lot of the fantasy of Star Wars, whether it's becoming a Jedi Knight or a Sith, whether it's going to, uh, what is it, getting into a starship and getting into dogfights, doing the Death Star trench run, exploring like some hidden caverns on some planet within the Star Wars universe, there's all these different things. This one right here really puts you into the shoes of a Star Wars character and has honestly one of the best twists in a story in the Star Wars franchise. Bottom line, that's just a fact. For many different people, especially if you've really experienced this multiple times. It's an RPG by Bioware, allows you to pick both light side and dark side uh, in relation to this story that has a massive twist, that has some of the best, most iconic characters from the Star Wars video game universe that a lot of people really love. I mean, let's just scroll down here. I mean, one of the biggest ones, obviously, is this girl right here, Basil Sean, right here. We have Basil Sean, who is a massive, massive big deal. For many people that love Star Wars video games. One of the best female characters in Star Wars. Right next to Mara Jade. Right next to Rihanna Sarin. Right next to Princess Leia. Right next to Padme Amidala. The list goes on. For people that have played this game. And have loved many of the different characters in here. Which we'll see in just a second. Basil Sean is definitely up there on the top list. And it'd be awesome to see... You know, at some point, maybe Basil Sean makes some sort of comeback in other games in various forms. It could be like a cameo or something because people love that character for many reasons. I mean, even now, you probably can't see it here, but I have a little Basil Sean figure from Diamond Select Toys. Again, the character's that much of a big deal. So anyway, there's other characters in here that are awesome. Darth Malak, which by the way, if you didn't know, the new Lego sets for a lot of Star Wars stuff that are coming up for, I believe is the 25th anniversary or the 20th anniversary uh, the R2-D2 set has a little Darth Malak minifigure, okay? If I had the extra spending cash, I would totally get this just for that figure alone. I would build R2-D2, of course, because we love R2-D2 out here. But that Darth Malak figure, I want it. For real, I really do want it. But anyway, there are other aspects about this game that are just beloved besides the characters. The fact that we get to go to various different planets set about 4,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, which I think is good for a Star Wars game to not only give us familiar aspects but also give us new places to go explore that we probably heard about in some of the films, that we probably heard about in some of the expanded universe material, like Dantooine. Everybody remembers Dantooine. Princess Leia mentions it during Episode 4 of New Hope. 
We actually get to go to Dantooine and actually do some stuff over there. 4,000 years in the past, so it's very different than what it might be during the Galactic Civil War, during the time of the original trilogy. The point is, this game right here is one of the best, if not the best, Star Wars game ever made. And if you haven't played it, I highly recommend that you check it out. It's not perfect. It does have some aspects that could have been improved because, again, it shows its age. And this is the reason why we're getting that remake of Knights of the Old Republic. But it's definitely up there on the must-play list for many people that need to check out this game. Because there's no reason why you should not play Code Sword Knights of the Old Republic. It's that good. It's that important. It's that awesome. And it definitely has a lot of stuff that you definitely need to explore if you haven't already. Moving on. Well, let's talk about another banger, son. Let's talk about another banger that is just absolutely epic win in so many regards. Because let me tell you something. I've been on the behind of Aspire Games and Lucasfilm Games to get this next game remastered in some form. We should get a remaster of this game. I've been talking about this for years. Years. Okay? Bottom line, Star Wars Rogue Squadron. One of my favorite N64 games of all time. One of my favorite Star Wars games of all time. Star Wars Rogue Squadron is still one of the best action flight or arcade flight games, period. Okay? The game is so good. You not only get to pilot an X-Wing and multiple other starships, you get various different missions set between the events of Episode 4 and Episode 5, and even dabbling in a couple other places, including after Return of the Jedi, during the EU, during the Dark Empire Saga. Anybody read the Dark Empire Saga with the World uh, Devastators? There's a whole bunch of stuff with the first Rogue Squadron game that really gets into that. That's just still to this day a lot of fun to play. Like, it is awesome. It is hands down freaking awesome. And what's crazy too, on top of uh, all the sequels that it spawns, we got Rogue Leader on GameCube. We got Rebel Strike on GameCube as well. And it was also this game and, and really also the X-Wing series was a heavy inspiration for Star Wars Squadrons that we got later on on PlayStation 4 and eventually PlayStation 5. <laughs> and also PlayStation VR. The thing is, what makes Rogue Squadron so special, and why I feel like it's the game that people could constantly go back to, is because it's easy to get into, easy to play, and just fun to play for a long period of time. If you've never played Rogue Squadron before, I highly recommend that you do so. Do not, however, do not get it on PC, okay? The main reason why this game right here on PC is not that good is because it has a lot of problems that you need mods in order to fix it up. <laughs> if you just want the straight experience out of the box, you need to play this game on Nintendo 64 the way it was meant to be played, at least in my personal opinion. There are other people that'll disagree with me, saying that, hey, you can still play this on PC, put in a couple mods, you're good to go, it looks better, it runs better, and I understand that, we get that, we understand that out here. But if you want the true Rogue Squadron experience, you need to play this on Nintendo 64. It is that good, it is that awesome, it is that much fun to really get into. Now let's move on to number four, or the fourth game I can mention here, which is another classic, absolute classic. We're talking banger that is still a must-play for many different Star Wars gamers out here, okay? Many different Star Wars fans, they swear by this game, and it just so happens to be the 20th anniversary of this series, okay? Let's talk about good old Star Wars Battlefront, and more specifically, the reason why I'm bringing up Star Wars Battlefront 2 Okay, instead of the original Battlefront, it's because Battlefront 2 is obviously the superior game. Now, we're not talking about EA's Battlefront, okay? Obviously, it's there. It's one of the best-looking Star Wars games out there. But people swear by this one right here. They swear by it. It's so good. And it's still beloved and still a whole lot of fun to play, even to this day. I'm on the Wikipedia. has all this stuff on here. There's a couple screenshots of some of the stuff in here as well. Description, everything else. Look, look how long this thing goes. It just keeps going. There's so much information. People love this game. People have dissected this game so much because it is so freaking good. Okay? It has multiple eras of Star Wars. Not just the original trilogy, but it has the Clone Wars as well. This came out around the time of Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, where things were still fresh in everybody's mind from that movie. <coughs> and it was still at the very tail end of the Clone Wars where everybody was really excited about that era of Star Wars. But what makes this game so good is that it's fun to play, easy to get into, endlessly replayable between the instant action, Galactic Conquest, all the CTF stuff, the hunt modes. We got the Galactic Conquest, which has multiple different boards you could actually play through, and it's a build-off of the original Galactic Conquest from the first Star Wars Battlefront. <laughs> and finally, also, the heroes. 
the heroes are a huge deal or a huge game changer compared to how it was handled in the original Battlefront. And the reason why is because in the first Battlefront game, you could not play as the heroes. You could not actually use them uh, for many different reasons. The whole idea and the whole philosophy behind Star Wars Battlefront was to be a trooper on the battlefield, not play as any one of the characters that we know, but influence the battles as a trooper, whether it was on the Galactic Empire side, the Rebel Alliance, the clones for the Republic, or the CIS as the droids. Bottom line, you were playing these games to be on the battlefield. And once the first game was successful, People loved it. They wanted things to go bigger and better. And then on top of that, on top of playing as the heroes, which we have a collection of heroes, which is awesome. Between both versions of these games, by the way, you're looking at me here, PlayStation 2 version, Xbox uh, original version. This one actually has more content than this one here. It actually has more heroes and more maps, which is a big deal. But on top of that, we also had the space battles. The space battles were obviously fan-freaking-tastic. They were so good. And the reason why they were so good is because you could actually go between two capital ships, try to mess up your opponent's capital ship, the opposing force, try to take it down by taking out some of its systems, life support, shields, turrets, all this stuff, pilot a different starfighter or an actual transport to bring your troopers into their ship. It was a whole lot of fun. Battlefront 2 still remains to this day as one of the best Star Wars games out there. Right next to Knights of the Old Republic, there's a big debate between a lot of people between Battlefront 2 or Battlefront in general and the Knights of the Old Republic series. And they're great and they're important for many different reasons. Between the both of them, they are fantastic. Obviously, must play games. But Battlefront 2, yo. Again, I have multiple copies of this. I have it on these two platforms. I have it on PC, on Steam. I have it all over the place. I even have the PSP version. There was a PSP version of Battlefront 2, which had its own stuff. Even though it wasn't the best place to actually play this game, it had its issues with controls and stuff on the PSP, but it had its own exclusive modes on top of that. Like, people love Battlefront 2. So if you haven't played it yet, do yourself a favor. Go on Steam on your PC, hit up that Steam sale, buy it for like two bucks, and play it. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. You can't get any more of a big recommendation from me than that. As someone that plays a lot of Star Wars games, that has played so many Star Wars games, probably almost nearly every Star Wars game that has been released to date, I cannot tell you that I cannot recommend Battlefront 2 Classic enough. You need to play it. Let me know your thoughts about that down below in the comments section because I'm telling you, Star Wars Battlefront 2 is that good. But of course, we're not done yet. Last but not least, this game right here, right? <clears throat> I can't leave you guys without one more uh, game to recommend. And one that's recent, too, that actually just won a Grammy, okay? Just won a Grammy for Best Video Game Soundtrack, or Best Soundtrack for a Video Game. Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Of course, we gotta talk about this, bad boy. We gotta, t we gotta talk about this, okay? Star Wars Jedi Survivor, uh, an absolute fantastic game. It had a little bit of a rough launch, right? <coughs> a little rough... <clears throat> with its launch, but it was still fantastic. When you got into it, Battlefront, I mean, uh, what is it? Star Wars Jedi Survivor was fantastic. <coughs> Excuse me, a coughing. We got Cameron Monaghan as Cal Kestis once again, coming off of Jedi Fallen Order, which was fantastic in its own right. The only reason why we are highlighting, <coughs> we are highlighting Jedi Survivor over Jedi Fallen Order is because I feel as a whole, like looking at both these games, having reviewed both of them, played them both extensively, Jedi Fallen Order may have the better story, the better introduction of Cal Kestis, the better introduction of some of these characters set within this time period of Star Wars just after Revenge of the Sith, but the better gameplay is for Jedi Survivor, okay? Bottom line, Jedi Fallen Order had the better story, Better Jedi Survivor has the better gameplay. And I really truly believe that. I find that this game is fantastic because we got multiple planets to explore. We have more special moves and more different like branching paths of how to level up Cal Kestis. We have multiple lightsabers, multiple outfits and stuff. We got BD-1 with us, our boy BD-1. Okay, the little droid over here. I'll even show you guys. I don't know if you can see it up there. I gotta go right. He's right, he's right over here. You see? Little Lego BD-1 that I built. There from the Lego set from Jedi Fallen Order, by the way. They need a Jedi Survivor variant. They need to release one. But I'm just saying, we got our boy BD-1 there. Okay, on top of that. <laughs> but the big thing with Jedi Survivor, multiple planets, bigger story, uh, crazy battles overall. <clears throat> crazy battles overall, okay? 
and a lot of bigger and better things that what we initially got from Jedi Fallen Order just were expanded upon with Jedi Survivor. I think that this is a game that is fantastic as far as new Star Wars games are concerned. I think Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor are two of the best of the modern era for Star Wars games, which meaning the EA era uh, around the time when they had the exclusivity deal or exclusivity agreement for Star Wars games. Okay, before we now got more new stuff that's coming down the line, which we'll get into in just a bit. But overall, I cannot... <coughs> oh my God, coughing so much. Because my throat is dry, like talking about all this stuff. You see what, what I go through for you guys to talk about Star Wars games? Mm. I, all the, the, the kind of goofy stuff or whatever, right? Bottom line, I can't recommend Star Wars Jedi Survivor enough. Because as far as brand new Star Wars games are concerned, it has everything. It has a great story, has interesting characters, has all the battles that you go on as far as being a Jedi Knight with lightsabers, as well as also implementing elements of other Star Wars eras. Jedi Fallen Order was just coming off of the Clone Wars, and there was a couple things about the Clone Wars there off the heels of Revenge of the Sith and Order 66. But with Jedi Survivor, we got other things that are getting implemented into it as well. We got, obviously, the Galactic Civil War, which is starting to kind of, you know, be kind of like at the very starting point of it with the Galactic Empire coming to its power and really dominating the galaxy. But then we also got the fallout of the Clone Wars. There are droids in here that are being used by different factions. The Battle Droids, B1s, the Super Battle Droids. We got other things as well of various races that are coming into play. But then on top of that, even though I'm not a huge fan of the High Republic, I will say that it's interesting to see elements of the High Republic get interject interjected into Jedi Survivor, where we're exploring these caverns that have been around for like a couple hundred years, that Cal could actually find out different things about the Jedi Order or just things or elements about the Force. Stuff like that I find is interesting because it really builds out the universe and really starts to make things very more, uh, much more layered and complex for a character that we thought we already had a handling on the universe, and it just makes it much more interesting. I will say, however, <coughs> I will say, however, I do wish that the elements of the High Republic were a little bit much more of a bigger factor playing into some of the elements of the plot and the main plot, right? Because we do have Dagon Gera, who is a Jedi from the High Republic era that fi somehow finds himself, without spoiling, in the area that Cal Kestis is part of, but it still wasn't that much more impactful as much as I would have liked it too. It was interesting to see that as part of it. And I was like really hoping we get to see other elements get interjected from what's going on current day from the stuff that was in the High Republic. But it's cool to see that. I also do believe that at least with that game, with the High Republic elements, that they should have also maybe detailed other elements or other details about the High Republic for people that haven't read those books. Because remember, there's a lot of books and comic books that are related to the High Republic. Who knows, maybe Star Wars Eclipse might kind of get me more on board with that era. But the point is, though, you're getting all that stuff in this game that's brand new, that has all the elements that you could want from a Star Wars game. So there you go. Those are five must-play Star Wars games for everybody out there. You need to play these games right now if you haven't already done so. Again, running through them again just for as a recap. Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith, the game. You can find that online, I believe, on PSN or on a PC, if I'm not mistaken. Again, you can find it in multiple places, but go check it out when you can, however you can. Star Wars Co uh, Knights of the Old Republic 1. The original Knights of the Old Republic, absolute banger of a classic. One of the best Star Wars games ever made. You can find it in multiple platforms as well. Steam, PC. You can find it on Xbox, on Xbox, uh, was it, uh, Xbox Live Store, I believe as well, the original version. But you could get it in multiple places now. Star Wars Rogue Squadron. You can find it on PC and also N64. Get the N64 version and play that if you can. Star Wars Battlefront 2 Classic from 2005. Absolute banger classic of a Star Wars game. If you haven't played it, there's multiple places that you can play this game. I wish it was remastered, but if you have to play it right now, go get it on Steam. It is still one of the best Star Wars games of all time. And finally, Star Wars Jedi Survivor from Respawn Entertainment. Available in multiple places. I played it on PlayStation 5 and also on Xbox Series X. It's an awesome game. Cannot recommend it enough. Those are five must-plays of Star Wars games for all of you Star Wars fans out there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that for Star Wars Podcast Day because there's a lot in there. But we're not done yet, okay? We're not done yet. Let me know some of your thoughts about all the games I talked about in the comment section down below. Leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And make sure you go follow me on social media if you guys want to keep talking about any of those Star Wars games that I mentioned. But we are not done yet, like I just said. We got a lot more stuff to talk about. Mm. This is going to be a beefy episode for Star Wars Podcast Day because it's either go big or go home. Do or do not. 
There is no tryout here when it comes to Star Wars or Star Wars video games with me. That's why you guys have me here. That's why you guys got me to talk about these games and other gaming related topics. And one big topic that I do want to discuss that's actually important, right? <coughs> is actually something based on what I actually did a TikTok video for, okay? Now, if you haven't already, <coughs> excuse me, if you haven't already, go follow me on TikTok at Jake James Lugo. I'm uploading every single day over there gaming related stuff, Star Wars related stuff, talking movies and entertainment and TV, all that stuff. But one of the topics I brought up recently that if you haven't already seen it, you need to go watch this video. I'm not going to play it here because, you know, the sound and stuff. <coughs> go check this out on my TikTok, right? I was talking about why is it that we don't have any Star Wars games or a lot of Star Wars games, I should say, that are set during the era of the sequel trilogy. Now, I need to clarify this, okay, to be absolutely clear about this, okay, because a couple people brought this up in the comments and they didn't listen to what I was saying in the video. I'm not talking about games like Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens. Obviously, we do have the stuff from the sequel era in Star Wars Battlefront 2 from EA, but I'm talking about pure, original, brand new Star Wars games that aren't necessarily about the events of the sequel trilogy, not adapting The Force Awakens, not adapting The Last Jedi or The Rise of Skywalker. I'm talking about games set within that era that might tell other stories. It doesn't have to be with the characters that we know, like Rey, Poe, Finn, or any of the characters, Kylo Ren. We don't need to have those characters in there but what about games and stories and characters that are just set within that time frame that was the thing that i was saying and that i was talking about because i said that it's interesting that we don't have that for many for whatever reason a lot of people could blame it on the reception of the sequel trilogy a lot of people just don't like the sequel trilogy overall they don't like the last jedi they don't like the rise of skywalker it is what it is you know that's a whole nother debate we don't have to get into that's a whole nother two-hour discussion right but on top of that Outside of LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens and what we got from Battlefront 2, we don't have a lot of stuff for video games set within that era. Even smaller games, we just don't have that. We have characters like Rey that do appear in various different other titles, especially in like LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, which probably is the best example of adapting that sequel trilogy timeline. But again, it's with LEGO. And as much as I love LEGO Star Wars, we love LEGO Star Wars out here. But I'm talking about pure Star Wars games. It's something that I felt was open and good for discussion because I feel like we haven't really had a real big talk about stuff like that. It's always diverging that type of stuff into the, the disdain for the sequel trilogy, and it is what it is. But when we're talking about if we want original Star Wars games and we want brand new ideas and brand new concepts from Star Wars games, I feel like that era of Star Wars could be interesting to explore. It doesn't necessarily have to take place on the same planets. It doesn't necessarily have to involve a lot of the stuff that we see in the movies. But it could be interesting to see something happen within that time frame, whether it's someone that's on the run from the First Order or someone that's actually helping out the Resistance that, you know, discovering some of the aspects uh, that the First Order had gotten, you know, and stuff involving Starkiller Base or anything else that happened with, uh, what is it, any of the characters that are in there. Again, it, it's, it's stuff that could be like a side story that doesn't necessarily have to involve some of those characters. I mean, for me... Obviously, a big thing now that's going on, and we're going to talk about other games in just a bit, uh, involving bounty hunters, involving scoundrels, involving all these other people. What it would be neat to see, too, and it's kind of like, again, getting into Battlefront territory, is to talk about other characters that are probably part of the Resistance or the First Order and see how their stories progress. Very similar to what Battlefront 2 from EA did with Inferno Squadron, how they were kind of, you know, with the Empire and then they went to the Resistance. That, that whole concept could be done a little bit differently and I think better in some ways by actually committing whatever that character is to that one faction or if we really want to try something uh, really ambitious, do two stories. Tell a story from the Resistance side and then tell a story from the First Order side. Not necessarily a Jedi character or not necessarily someone that's Force sensitive, but somebody that's involved with all these things going on. Make it in the same way like how Star Wars Outlaws is approaching their game but actually have it where it probably is tangential to those factions, but just not to the characters that we know. And it's weird to say that because we, again, it's a Star Wars game. We have to have some sort of element involving the characters that we know. Maybe you get some sort of like, you know, mission from Leia, that Princess Leia or Queen Leia or General Leia makes some sort of like cameo, kind of like what Yoda did during uh, Republic Commando. If you guys remember this, if you ever played Republic Commando on any platform, Yoda makes a cameo at the very end when you're on Kashyyyk. He actually sends you a message. 
Imagine getting something like that from General Leia or getting something like that from Poe Dameron. I think this could be something really cool by giving us something original that is within a time frame that some people feel indifferent about when it comes to Star Wars games. Again, it's just ideas and it's a topic that I felt like was worth discussing in some way that I felt like could have been really interesting. It could have been a lot of fun, could have been something neat for Star Wars fans to get, especially if you like the sequel trilogy in some way. What better way to actually have something that you could get on some common ground with everybody else that might feel a little bit different. But those are just some of my thoughts about this. Let me know some of your thoughts about everything that I just mentioned here in the comment section down below. Of course, keep it civil. Talk to me about what type of sequel era games you might want to see. What type of ideas and concepts concepts for the sequel era that could work in a video game. Or if you just want to see one of the, the movies adapted or at least given a different perspective, talk to me about which ones you guys actually want to see happen. I think that'd be some good uh, discussion overall. Now, let's keep it moving because besides past or plausible or like, you know, hypothetical Star Wars games, mm, we got to talk about upcoming Star Wars games because I can't have a Star Wars uh, di- podcast day podcast without talking about the brand new stuff that's coming out soon. And we have to talk about our favorite developer as of late. We got Respawn Entertainment, okay? The peeps that made Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, made Star Wars Jedi Survivor, they're cooking over there and they're doing a third game. Cameron Monaghan already confirmed like, hey, we're already working on it, okay? Let Cameron and the team cook is all I'm saying. Let them do their thing because whatever game they're going to (coughs) do... I feel like it's going to be a banger in some ways. But this is an article that's shared over by EA Electronic Arts on their website talking about some of the newest upcoming Star Wars games from various different teams that are working over at Respawn and and Electronic Arts. Uh, Obviously, we got Star Wars Jedi 3, whatever it's going to be called. I think it's got to come up with a really cool game besides Jedi Survivor. We had Fallen Order, Survivor, and it's got to be something really impactful for whatever that third game is going to be. But... That's not the only game that's actually being developed over there at Respawn Entertainment. What we do have, <coughs> what we do have is a Star Wars game that's a first person shooter. Now, if you know anything about Respawn Entertainment, they're over there. They're the same people that did Titanfall. Okay. These are like ex Call of Duty developers that went and made an awesome first person shooter that was absolutely wild. Okay. People love Titanfall. They love Titanfall too for many different reasons. Now, imagine that same level of creativity and the same level of talent being put towards a Star Wars game. And not just any type of Star Wars game. Let me remind you, okay? For anybody that doesn't remember this, right? Let me scroll down to the point where they actually say it. Okay, I'm trying to actually find it here. They actually have it where they're taking inspiration. Okay, where is it? Does it say it in here? Does it say it in here? Oh my God, it, it's like, it's, start, it's a little hard to kind of like find. Does it go downward? No, it doesn't go downward. Okay, but they say it in here in one of these little sections, okay? Where... This first-person shooter that they're developing at Respawn Entertainment is going to take example from the Star Wars Jedi Knight series. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, okay, if you forgot, we're talking Star Wars Dark Forces. We're talking Star Wars Jedi Knight. Star Wars Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast, okay? Star Wars Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy. Those four games that are classics on PC and consoles for some people, that's where they're taking inspiration from, uh, from. Could this mean that they're doing a Star Wars game that could be implementing Kyle Katarn? I don't know. I don't think so. I think that what they are doing is taking a lot of inspiration gameplay-wise, blending first-person shooter elements and third-person elements, including swinging a lightsaber, how we used to do in the Jedi Knight games, in Jedi Outcast and Jedi Academy. That sounds awesome. That sounds amazing, okay? However, we don't have a lot of details about it other than they've been hiring for this actual Uh, game as well as the other games that they've been making but i think it'd be really cool to see what the titanfall people can do with a star wars title i think this would be really interesting i think this is gonna be a lot of fun because they know first person shooters they know what's up when it comes to making a good fps game so imagine their love for star wars getting blended with that and what we could do and what we could get from something like that that's heavily inspired by some of those classic Star Wars FPS games. I think I'm excited. I cannot wait to see when they eventually talk about this again. I don't think we're going to hear about it for a very long time for many reasons because 
again, there's so much to do, and they've been hiring in many different places. There have been LinkedIn posts that have been talking about what they're doing over there, what they're looking for. I, I think at one point they were looking for a narrative designer. I think at one point they were looking for a level designer or a UI designer, stuff like that. It's been over the last, like, what, year or so? I remember writing about this over on various different websites about the news when this first came out. And again, I got excited because it's like, yo, what better way to make a Star Wars FPS than with a group of people or a group of developers that know FPS games. Like, it, it's a match made in heaven. It's like peanut butter and jelly or peanut butter and chocolate. Like, let's go. I'm excited about stuff like this, and you should be excited too. Let me know your thoughts about it down below in the comments. Let me know over on social media. Are you ready for an FPS game set in the Star Wars universe by X Titanfall devs? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is going to be fantastic, okay? But we're not done yet. That's not the only thing that's coming too, okay? Let's go back over to that article. They are also making a Star Wars RTS, a Star Wars real-time strategy game. Now, there's very little details known about this, and I think at one point that they were actually collaborating with some other developer, I think a mobile dev, that does other types of like RTS games as well, but there's potential here, okay? There's potential here, and there's a reason why there's potential here. If you didn't already know, if you never played it before, one of the best RTS games for Star Wars is a game called Star Wars Empire at War, which is still played a ton to this day. There's a huge modding community that does some amazing stuff with it on PC. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go check it out on PC on Steam. You can get it for pretty cheap right now with a whole bunch of content expansions and access to all those mods. It's ridiculous how good it is, okay? But imagine an RTS game set in the Star Wars universe borrowing elements from Empire War. Like, and again, we don't know what they're doing here. They haven't really talked about their inspiration for what that game's going to be. I don't even think they really mention it a lot here as far as what they're doing with it. Like, I'm looking through it really quickly. <clears throat> but it still has a lot of good potential there, okay? Again, we already know Respawn's and EA's track record when it comes to games like this, or game, at least games that are sent in the Star Wars universe that are of most recent, okay? There's at least a level of quality and an expectation that's set there, okay? Also, of course, there's other real-time strategy games that they could take inspiration from that are more modern, like Total War, I believe also Civilizations, they could really look at and see what works and doesn't work. But if they could get a lot of inspiration from Empire at War and really take some of those elements and those ideas and gameplay mechanics and expand upon them, make them better, give us better quality of life stuff, I feel like this can be an absolute banger. This could be an absolute epic win for Star Wars fans because we have so much more diversity now when it comes to types of games that we could play compared to when it was just with the EA licensing stuff. Things have really opened up ever since the EA exclusivity has really kind of, you know, receded into the background because we'll get into another game later that we're talking about that also opens up a lot of possibilities. But even with more games still coming from EA or EA-owned studio or publisher, you know, or not publisher, but EA-owned team like Respawn Entertainment, there's still a lot of great stuff to look forward to because if you don't like one style of game, you got other options to go to. We're going to be getting a third-person action game like with the Jedi series. We're getting a first-person shooter that's taking heavy inspiration from classic Star Wars FPS games, and we're getting a real-time strategy game that's going to give us something brand new and different that could be inspired by classic RTS games. This is fantastic. This is a great time right now, or at least things are really starting to look up for Star Wars fans that play a lot of video games. But those are just my opinions on it. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Are you hyped up about any of these games? Do you want to see some cool stuff, or do you have some ideas of what some of these new games from Respawn Entertainment can actually be? I'm excited. I'm really excited to see what happens with some of these games, and I cannot wait to when they actually start talking about it, because I think it's going to be hype. It's going to be absolutely freaking hype, okay? So final topic... I want to discuss here, which is a good one because we got to talk about the latest Star Wars game that's coming out fairly soon, more than likely this year, Star Wars Outlaws. Ooh. We got to talk about Star Wars Outlaws because there's been a lot of news that's come out about it lately and a lot of things that have been discussed about it because that game might be dropping this year, which is would be awesome if it's in the spring or if it's in the summer or if it's in the winter for the holidays. I don't care. I'm there day one to play Star Wars Outlaws, because I think it's going to be hype, okay? However, let's talk about a couple things related to it that I feel like are worth discussing, even though I've touched upon them here and there in a few other places, but I do want to talk about it here, just in this format for all of you out there that are listening to this podcast during Star Wars Podcast Day. As always, I appreciate it. I appreciate the love and support, but make sure you guys let me know some love down below in the comments, and let me know your thoughts about everything. But let's talk about Star Wars Outlaws, okay? 
Number one, this is an article that I wrote over on Dot Esports a little while back uh, that I talk about Star Wars Outlaws really being the first open world Star Wars game, okay? I actually had a whole editorial that you could go read over there right now uh, defining not only what is a true open world game, but why specifically this Star Wars game is the first one to do it and why it should be given credit for being the first Star Wars game that is actually an open world game, okay? The reason why this is a big deal is because Star Wars Outlaws really hits on all the points of being an open world game between the the, the large space to explore, a lot of the places that you're going to be able to kind of like, you know, really go off the beaten path and find other stuff that might be different than the main quest line. <laughs> In addition to that, we also have the ability to go to space, to go between different planets, to explore. And on top of that, from my understanding, from what the developers over at Ubisoft and Massive Entertainment have talked about, a lot of things are going to be dynamic and you're going to have an element of choice with certain elements going on in uh was it star wars outlaws in the main game as well as also with the gameplay itself there's a lot of great stuff to look forward to with that but star wars outlaws is really truly the first open world star wars game there's a lot of different star wars games that people point to that have said like oh no this is open world this is open world and that is not necessarily the case <clears throat> The main reason being is because everybody cannot agree on a lot of different stuff to defining what an open world game is. A lot of people have said KOTOR, Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2 is open world. A lot of people have said Star Wars Galaxies is open world. A lot of people have said Star Wars Jedi Survivor is open world. And I can tell you right now, <coughs> after doing the research and going through a lot of different stuff for all three of those games, all three of those games are not really open world games. Or at least they don't define what a true open world game would necessarily be. Just because you have a lot of space to explore. You have an open area to really travel around and kind of like interact with different things. That doesn't necessarily make it an open world game by definition. Okay, Star Wars Galaxy is an, o is an MMO. One of the best MMOs out there. Or one of the most classic MMOs out there for a lot of people. Especially for Star Wars fans. <coughs> the other one too that gets brought up a lot is the old republic which is the one that's actively going on right now because galaxies is not no longer around oh the old republic is really the mmo that star wars fans play and again there's a lot of stuff to do there's a lot of places to go however it's not necessarily an open world game by definition because not only is there multiple players that keep things kind of dynamic but there are other players by design it's not made to be a world or an ecosystem that you can interact with like that that is dynamic constantly changing all the time in much in the same way and the big kind of comparison that people go to when it comes to true open world games, games like No Man's Sky, games like Horizon Zero Dawn or Horizon Forbidden West, games like the Grand Theft Auto series, which kind of defines what the modern open world game is like. You know, there are certain nuanced elements about open world games and about Grand Theft Auto specifically that really kind of put it away ahead of other games now that some people try to say is open world. The closest ones that I find for Star Wars games that are more closer to being an open world game was Jedi Survivor and Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Here's the problem though, okay, for Star Wars fans, okay? The reason why, okay, Skywalker Saga and Jedi Survivor are not open world games compared to what this is going to be is because one, Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga is a sandbox game more than anything else, even though there's a lot of places you could go to and a lot of places you could explore. It's not dynamic. It's fixed. They're, they're static. They're things that you could go and interact with that are not necessarily dynamic like that. And what I mean by dynamic is things that are constantly changing all the time. That while certain positions of stuff might be there, like certain characters, objects, or whatever else, the interaction and the, the outcomes and the, the permutations of all those interactions and what you could do as the player are constantly changing. It's almost kind of like a roguelike where things are not necessarily the same every single time you go to the same spot. Okay, that's what really, for me anyway, personally, really helps define what an open world game is and what is not an open world outside of all these other things. And even with Jedi Survivor, it comes really close. And even I would almost in some instances categorize it as an open world game. But even the developers themselves, there's interviews that have floated around about Star Wars Jedi Survivor where they say it's not really an open world game. And for me, where it really clinch, uh, clinches that is when you actually go to the meditation points and everything gets reset and goes back to the same fixed area or interactions or paths that the developers had there. It's it's the same thing with the Soulsborne games. Okay, it's Dark Souls, Bloodborne, uh, Elden Ring. There's an argument that could be made there. And some people would say Elden Ring is really an open world game. But there's a lot of little details that people constantly debate with it. 
But for the sake of our discussion, when it comes to Star Wars games, those to me are not true open world games. And what's going to to separate those games from Star Wars Outlaws is that Star Wars Outlaws is hitting on every single point of trying to be a true open world game. And it's cool to see this because we're not only getting something different <clears throat> compared to some of the other Star Wars games we got of lately, but we're also getting something that is giving us stuff that we've asked for years. We're actually going to get a game that gives us a seamless transition from ground interaction or ground gameplay to space combat, to space gameplay and exploration. We saw that in the trailer for Star Wars Outlaws, and it is awesome. A lot of people are not as hyped as they probably should be about this. I mean, look at it. You got an open world game. When you go to planets, you get to explore everything that's going on in that planet. You get to have missions and quests, uh, interactions with certain factions that give you certain reputation of certain groups that are going after you or helping you out. And then you get to go to space seamlessly. Okay. At least the transition is like, you know, whatever animation it goes from ground to space. And then all of a sudden you're flying around in space in your starship like that. And then being able to travel to other planets that you get to go do the same thing and explore all what they have to offer. This is what Star Wars fans like myself who play a lot of video games have been asking for for years. Ever since people wanted Star Wars Battlefront 3 to do that, which is what that game was going to do. And then unfortunately, uh, Star Wars Elite Squadron and uh, yeah, Elite Squadron and Renegade Squadron tried to do and didn't really do it all that well on the PSP. But this is what we are talking about. This is what we are getting with Star Wars Outlaws. And I am excited about that. That is really awesome. And I cannot wait to see that happen. But there's also one other thing we need to talk about with Star Wars Outlaws, which isn't as shiny as this other stuff. We really need to talk about this decisions thing, okay? Now, what am I talking about here, okay? Let me actually show you guys. This is an article over on uh, Game Rant, okay? And you can find some of this stuff in other places as well, but Game Rant is the one I'm actually pointing to because it actually has it highlighted, right? There it is, Okay. Players can make choices that will affect KVS's reputation with certain organizations and syndicates. So like the Huts, maybe the Pikes, I'm hoping, God willing, okay? God, look, look, look at me right here, Star Wars fans. God willing, we get to see the Black Sun Syndicate in here, which means because this takes place between the Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, that means that Shadows of the Empire elements can be implemented to this. Fingers crossed with this. But let me continue. That can make us their reputation with certain organizations and syndicates. However, it has been confirmed that there aren't any branching narrative threads that these choices don't affect the overall story of the game. Now, here's my problem with this, okay? <clears throat> the reason why I have a main big issue with this whole stuff is because, unfortunately, even though we have choices with certain interactions with the main, like, you know, organizations that we can interact with, my main issue is that those choices then become almost obsolete in the greater narrative of the game. We have examples of Star Wars games that give us alternate endings and including Star Wars games that give us choices that lead to alternate endings or permutations for the outcome of the story. Again, we have games like Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, the game, which has two different endings depending on how you actually play that fight. We have the KOTOR games, 1 and 2, that give us different endings based on what type of path we do, what type of path we choose, our certain choices and interactions with different characters. This is possible. And I'm pretty sure there's other examples people could come up with. This is definitely possible. <coughs> so if you're going to give us choices in a game, why not have those choices matter? Besides the reputation stuff, have it matter in the sense of like, okay, if I have a really terrible a reputation with a certain syndicate like if i'm just being a jerk to them and i'm like hindering their progress and their plans how about those missions don't open up to me because of that or i get a different outcome with certain squabbles between syndicates and factions where i support one faction or the other that affects the outcome of the overall game or at least affects an epilogue if you guys have ever played the witcher the witcher 3 a perfect example Depending on what you do, granted, we have certain endings for Geralt in, in whatever that he does, but there's also certain side quests that you could do, depending on how you actually approach them, where you get a different epilogue and a different outcome at the very end of the game before the credits roll. Why not have something like that? If I want to support the Huts, right? If I decide to support Jabba the Hutt, if I want to work with him and get paid by the Huts, right? Okay, 
I should be able to get one outcome, right? But if I decide to betray Jabba the Hutt and become a real pain in the butt to him, that actually maybe causes some of the stuff that affects Return of the Jedi in some way, I should see something like that. My choices should matter in a greater way than just having like certain groups be a little bit more annoying to me or not during gameplay. Make the choices matter. Make the choices have more weight. Make the choices something more significant than just being there for the sake of being there. That's my biggest thing. Everything else about Star Wars Outlaws, I'm really looking forward to. I'm really excited about that. But that is the one specific thing for Kay Vess and her companions and Nicks and stuff that I feel like is a dropped ball. Because granted, again, I don't know how tough it is to develop games, even though I play a lot of video games. I don't know about development as much as some of the people that are actually making the games. But that does feel like that should be something that should be talked about, you know, especially with players who have wanted more choice in certain games to, to, to be more impactful, to at least, you know, have it be, if I'm part of this open world, you know, let whatever it is I do really affect that open world and really become a thing that could really be special for a lot of people. Again, this game is going to be big. It's going to be massive. It's coming out in 2024. It's already been confirmed by multiple places, including the official Disney Parks blog, where they did a whole blog post about big things coming in 2024, and Star Wars Outlaws was right there, confirmed. They did, however, did change that it was supposed to be either later 2024, but it got changed out because they're not sure when exactly it's going to drop, at least according to them, right? I really do hope it's earlier in 2024, but I digress, okay? Bottom line, Star Wars Outlaws is going to be a big deal for a lot of people, especially for me. Let me know your thoughts about Star Wars Outlaws down below in the comment section. Are you excited for the game? Are you going to be picking up day one? Are you going to wait it out? Are you a little disappointed about some stuff with Star Wars Outlaws? What are some of the actual things that you think are good or bad about Star Wars Outlaws, at least from what we know right now, having seen gameplay of it from the reveal trailer, the developer walkthrough, and all that stuff, and everything else that's been reported in many different gaming websites. But yeah, that's going to do it for my episode of the podcast for Star Wars Podcast Day. I really do hope a lot of you guys that are listening to this really enjoyed the podcast episode, everything else that came with it. Tell me your thoughts about it down below in the comments. Make sure you leave a like on this video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you guys want to get more podcast episodes like this, not just about Star Wars, but also about gaming stuff and everything else that's related in the entertainment and gaming space. Don't forget also that you guys could check me out on Twitter at Jake James Lugo, on TikTok at Jake James Lugo, New uploads every single day on TikTok, including Star Wars stuff, video game stuff, movies and TV stuff. You could also follow me on Instagram at Jake James Lugo as well. A whole bunch of things I'm posting on there all the time. I'm also on threads. If you guys didn't know that, I'm on threads at Jake James Lugo, sharing a lot of the content that I post everywhere else as well. I'm literally every single platform on social media at Jake James Lugo. If you want to find content that's great about gaming, Star Wars, movies, TV, etc. If you want to know about good stuff like that, your man right here has you covered. So show some love, check out all this stuff. Also, big shout outs again to Star Wars Podcast Day and everybody else that's been participating in it. Check out all the great podcast shows that are going to be part of the trends. There's a lot of different shows that are celebrating Star Wars and talking about podcast stuff or doing their own podcast episodes that you can find out on all the different hashtags and trends that are going on all over the place on social media. Big shout outs to them. Thanks again for checking out my podcast. Thanks again for allowing me to be part of this trend with everybody else out there. And hopefully I see you guys again real soon. Peace out and stay epic, everybody. This channel is sponsored by Flynn's Arcade and More, located in Margate, Florida. Flynn's is one of the premier spots for gaming fans in South Florida. They have a variety of arcade games on cabinet for you to play throughout the week, including all of your beloved classics. You could also play a ton of new and current console games too, on PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo consoles. Grab a snack or drink and enjoy the best gaming experience you'll find. Visit during one of their many big events to connect with the gaming community in South Florida. Want to test your skills in competitive fighting games? Join any of the weekly tournaments that happen at Flynn's for a chance for some cool prizes. And if you're into tabletop gaming or model kit building, there's a bunch of events there for you too. Swing by Flynn's Arcade and More, located in Margate Boulevard in Margate, Florida. You won't find a better spot than Flynn's.